What's up, guys? In this episode of Recovery and Relationships, we are going to be talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is such an important topic when it comes to porn and sexual addiction recovery because both parties have a lot of forgiveness work to do in both forgiving themselves and forgiving each other. Healing, recovery, intimacy, and happiness all begin with forgiveness. My name is Heather and I'm founder of Fight the Beast, the porn and sexual addiction recovery organization helping men and women to quit porn for good. A lot of this lesson is, this video, is going to be taken directly from our 30-day recovery program. That comes in book format and online course format and there's two different sections about forgiveness that we're going to look at and pull from. To start us off, there's two quotes that I really, really like, and these are in the book. The first one is from Louis B. Smeads, and it says, To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that prisoner was you. I love this quote, and it is so true. Whether you're struggling to forgive yourself or struggling to forgive your partner or others, when you forgive, you're set free. The next quote is from Alexander Pope and it says, to err is human, to forgive divine. One of the first steps for forgiveness, whether you're forgiving yourself or your partner, starts with allowing yourself to actually feel the emotions of what happened. Allow yourself to feel the grief and the sadness, not to give into it, not to overindulge in self-pity or pain, and to to wallow in the drama of it all, but to sincerely allow yourself to say, that hurt, I didn't like that, or I feel really bad, I have this pain, I have this grief inside of me, to identify that and to give yourself a moment to actually fully feel it as the first step to then letting it go. If you're working through forgiveness as a couple, identify together what went wrong. Get everybody's side of the story. Identify what went wrong, where the, um, where the mistakes were made, and get it on the table and let everyone just take ownership for their part in that problem. You can do this as an activity. Hopefully it doesn't spark an argument and everyone's coming to the table with, um, you know, eagerness to put the past behind you and to have that forgiveness but having that conversation of here's where we went wrong this is not the direction we want to continue to go let's identify what things we don't want to repeat the next part of this is to establish a plan for changes how are you going to fix those things that went wrong what is the plan what steps can you or both of you take so that there can be Um, a new phase of trust and growth and development in the relationship so that you no longer have to feel like you're hanging on to this past track record. So you have faith and confidence that things are going to change from here. Write out those plan, that plan. Do your research on what you need to do or what you can do as a couple so that you can have that, those positive changes and can let go of the past. The next And the hardest part of forgiveness is making the choice to actually start to let it go. (sighs) How many of us like doing that? It is really difficult to make that choice and to take it seriously and to stop bringing up the past, right? For one, you might get frequent flashbacks, thoughts of the past. Um, You might hear comments. There might be things in your life that are triggers for those past negative experiences. But as after you make the choice, I'm going to forgive my partner or myself for such and such, you have to start to weed those negative thoughts out of your mind. This is a process, right? Those thoughts don't just disappear all at once. That anger doesn't just disappear all at once. But if you make that conscious choice to forgive, now it's time to start weeding out those negative thoughts. One way that you can do this is by having some sort of ceremony. This is so helpful. You know, in Christian churches, there's the act of baptism, which symbolizes this forgiveness, 
process, the, the sins being wiped clean. In many ways and in other cultures, there's other symbols and rituals for forgiveness. So this is something that you can do. Maybe it's a, there's lots of silly rituals, um, symbolic things that you can do. You know, burning strips of paper with things that you're going to let go of, burning old memories, just choosing to let those go. And then making a promise to yourself and your partner to stop bringing them up so that everybody can have that clean slate that they deserve to become a better person moving forward. Something else that can be really helpful in forgiveness is identifying the positive outcomes that came from the negative experience or the pain or the hardship or the mistake that was made in the relationship. This can be kind of hard to do sometimes, but I promise you there is always a positive in there. Maybe it helped spark conversations on intimacy. Maybe it helped you guys to understand each other better. Maybe it helped everyone to grow, um, to become tougher, to work through negative emotions. Maybe it triggered therapy and now therapy is helping you guys to have a better relationship overall. Whatever it is, Find some positives, either together or individually, that came from the negative experience so that you can let the bad parts of it go and just be grateful for where you're at now and where you want to move to. Another activity that can help you feel motivated to forgive your partner is journaling or meditating on how forgiveness will actually improve your life. In, this is one of the activities in our 30-day program is working through why forgiveness is so important, why it's a positive. So take some time to think about it. How will forgiveness help you and your partner in the journey to healing and recovery? And finally, the last step that we're going to look at, talk about is to show your forgiveness, to show the change keep showing that you're making an effort, right? Um, they say that forget or an apology without change is just manipulation. I've heard this on social media. Um, so show that you've actually changed. Keep doing the work that needs to be done so that you don't revert and go back into the mess that you just forgave and tried to, to get over with each other. And some other tips on showing that forgiveness is change the way that you talk about each other. Not just cut out the negative, but actually allow that person today to be different. This is one of those things when I'm coaching guys, sometimes they feel like I'll never be able to change. I'll always be a porn addict. I remind them that you are who you are today. The past doesn't matter. If you were porn free today, be proud of yourself. Forgive yourself for the past. If your partner is porn free today, be proud of him. Forgive him for his past. Don't bring up the past. Don't even look at the past anymore. The present is what matters most. And so many people miss a beautiful present moment and um, prevent a beautiful future because they're so focused on past sins in the relationship. Again, there are two sections about forgiveness in the 30-day course and the 30-day um, the book. One of them is called forgiveness and the other one is called making amends. And that is all about how to apologize to your partner and gain their trust back. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely check out the book or the online course and check out the link below to learn more about how you can recover from porn or sexual addiction and how to help your partner recover from porn and sexual addiction. After this video, check out the playlist on recovery and relationships so that you can learn more and help your relationship heal and achieve results on the journey to recovery.